Welcome to labmins.com and our lab video series in Cisco ACS. You can find complete list of ACS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will look at how we can leverage a Cisco ACS server for device admin and a Cisco wireless LAN controller, so you no longer need to maintain a separate login account local to the controller. Here's our lab setup. We have a Cisco ACS version 5.4 at the IP of .100. We have a virtual wireless LAN controller at the IP of .104. And we have a Windows 2008 machine, which is our domain controller at the IP of .40. As far as the test user, we have three users. Two of them are located on the Active Directory, and the other one is local to the ACS. Each of them is a member of their own user group. And as they lock into the wireless LAN controller, we would like to assign a different set of roles to these users. First, let me explain the concept of authorization on the wireless LAN controller since we no longer deal with privilege level 0 through 15 like we did on the whether it's router, switch, or firewall. But instead, there's a concept of role, and the role corresponds to the read write access to each one of these tab and the wireless LAN controller menu. So for a user admin one, we're going to be assigning role all. That means this user is going to have access to all of the configuration pages on the wireless LAN controller. For support one, we would assign the role monitor. That means this person only has the access to the monitor tab and the read-only access to the remaining tabs. And as far as the local one, we're going to be assigning role the VLAN and security. That means they will have a full read-write access to those corresponding tabs, but again, read-only for the remaining tabs. Before we begin, let me show you the test users that we're going to be using. Two of them that's on the Active Directory, so here under the Users and Computers, we have Admin1, which is a member of Network Admin, and we have Support1, which is a member of Network Support. Okay, now on the ACS server, let's go ahead and lock in. And on the ACS itself, we have one local user that we're going to be using. If we go under the User and Identity, that's under Users. We have a local one that is part of local admin group. Now the first thing we're going to do is to add our wireless LAN controller as a network device to the ACS. So if we go under network resources, and if you remember back when we first added the switch and the firewall in the previous video, we created a device type group for our switch and the firewall. We're going to create one more for our wireless LAN controller. Just going to call it BLC and then submit. Make sure it's there. And then we can add the controller itself. So click create under the network device and AAA clients. The name is LMWLC1 for location. We're going to select the only location that we have, which is HQ. And for the device type, we're going to pick WLC. Now we have to give it IP address, which is 172.16.32.104. And we're going to be using TACX with the key of Cisco. Okay, and then we'll submit. Now what we're going to do next is to create what's called a device filter. And again, this is the, something that you might find useful. So what a device filter is, is the way to arbitrarily groups your network devices so that you can later on use as part of your authorization or authentication policies. So you don't have to really stick with the network device group that you created up here. And it's just provide you a lot of flexibility. So we're going to create a device filter for our wise LAN controller. Just to show you how that works, although we don't really need to, we can just easily use the network device group for that. But just to show you how that works, we're going to create a device folder called LMWLC. And you can see right here, you can input an IP address or if the device has been added already, you can just select the device. Or you can also pick the network device groups themselves. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to pick the wireless LAN controller as a device. So under device name tab, Click Create, click Select, and here you will see the list of all your network devices that's been added to ACS. So we'll select our LMWLC1, click OK, and then OK. So you can see how you can add any devices under the same device filter in whichever way you like. So Submit. Next, what we're going to do is to create a new shell profile. Like we mentioned, we're now no longer dealing with privileged levels. First, we have to give it a name. The first one we'll call the BLC all for complete access to the controller configuration. We're going to skip the common task since we no longer use the privilege level and there's not really anything here that we can use. But instead we're going to add a custom attributes that the controller will be honoring. 
and that particular attribute is called role with a number. So if you happens to assign or needs to assign multiple roles for the same user, then you can just increment the value at the end right here, which we'll do in the second here. But for this particular shell profile, we're going to give it role all and make sure they're case sensitive. Then you click add and then you submit. So that is for the admin one user with row all. Next, we're going to do support one with monitor. So we'll repeat the same process with create and then the VLC monitor custom attribute row one monitor. And just to make a quick note that the role monitor should not be mixed with any other role. Otherwise, all that user will receive is the monitor access and not the other roles. So monitor should be on its own submit and then we'll create. The last one we need to do is debut LAN and security. So we're going to call it our uh, WLC debut LAN sec. And this is where we're going to add multiple roles. So the first role is debut LAN add. And role two is security and then add. Okay, submit. Next, we are going to create uh, configure the access policies. So right here, we already have the LM device admin from our previous video when we did the switch and the firewall. We could easily just utilize the same access policy by just adding additional rules since we're using the exact same protocol, which is TACX. What we can do is to add a couple of new rules on top of this for the wise line controller. But instead, we're going to keep things kind of separated and nice and clean. So instead, what we're going to do is to create a new access service for our wise line controller TACX. So under the access services, we'll click create and then we'll give it a name. Call it LM WLC admin. And then we're going to create one from scratch and not using templates or anything with the device admin. Click next. All we need is PAP and finish. And then we'll go under the service selection rules. What we need to do is to distinguish the request from the controller from the other TACX request. So what we need to do is to customize and then we create the device filter for the controller. So we need to add that as part of our condition. Let's say it's anything that's coming from or any TACX request that's coming from WiseLAN controller, we want to send it to a different access service. So now we create a rule for protocol is TACX and then for the device filter, then we select the LN WLC that we created earlier. For the result, we're going to drop them into LM WLC admin service. We need to make sure since this one for the WLC is more specific, we need to move that up. So we match first and then we we'll save. So obviously anything that doesn't match the device folder LM WLC will still be caught by the match tactics protocol right at rule number two or the order two here. It's actually rule number one, the name. Okay, now we can go under the LM WLC admin and identity and we're going to choose our identity source sequences that we created earlier with uh, checking for AD and then local and then save and now we get under the authorization and we need to create authorization rules for each of these users. So the first rule or rule number one actually before we can even create the rule we need to modify again the conditions. So customize we're not going to be using compound conditions. We can add protocol and AD external groups and identity group for the local account ACS. And we're not dealing with the command sets here. So just shell profile for the results. Then we click create protocol tag X. First, we're going to deal with the admin one, which has the, or part of the Network admin AD group. So click OK. And for show profile, we will be assigned to BLC all. Click OK. So that's for the first user. Now for the second user, which is support one, protocol is TACX. Support one is part of a AD group called network support. And then for show profile, we'll be assigning just the monitor role to this particular user. OK. Now the last rule, rule number three. Again, TACX. Instead, we're going to choose the local identity group. And the group that we want is local admin. 
and show profile is debulant and security. Okay, and for the default, we want to deny access if it's not going to be matched by the first three rules on top there. Okay, then save changes. So that should be it for the configuration on the ACS. Next, we're going to move on to configuration on the WiseLAN controller. So what we need to do is to get under security. And here on AAA, TACX Plus, we need to add our ACS as a authentication server. So new. The IP of the ACS is 172.16.32.100. And the share secret, if you remember, we use Cisco. Everything else, we leave the default port number, state so our status enable timeout. Click apply. Next we'll do accounting. So any changes that's made to the controller will be locked on the ACS. So again the IP and then share secret. And now for authorization, IP of the ACS server and again the share secret. Now that we have the ACS server added, we need to utilize it. And the way to do that is under right here, priority order and management user. And by default you can see the controller will use the local and the radius server for admin authentication. But instead of radius, we're going to use TACX. We're going to move TACX over to the right. We still want to use local just for the fail safe in case the ACS is not reachable to the controller. And apply just to make sure that took it. There you go. Now that the configuration is done, let's go ahead and do some testing. So now I'm going to bring up another browser. So right now we're using IE, so let, let me bring up Firefox. And it's trying to lock in, and the first user that we're going to use is admin1 that has row all. So admin1, Cisco. You can see we can successfully lock in, and let's make some changes just to make sure this guy has the all the privilege that he needs. So let's maybe try to create a new SSID. So apply. You can see it can be created no problem. Go ahead and delete that. All right, if we go back to the ACS and look at the reports, uh, authentication authorization report, and see what we have here. So AAA protocol, TACX authentication. And here we have a green, which is a successful authentication from admin1 on the LMWLC1. Okay, so now if you look at the authorization, we also have a green and we click on the detail. You can see right here the TACX attributes or AV pair that was sent from ACS to the controller is row one equal. Okay, and let's take a look and see if we have anything under the TACX accounting. Okay, it looks like we do. So as soon as we enable the AAA accounting, anything or any changes that we made to the controller has been sent to ACS or here when we first log in using a local account admin and then we Add to the accounting server and then the authorization server. This is where, or this is the what's the underlying command that was executed on the controller itself. And here we also have the admin one that we just attempt to create a debulan SSID and then we also deleted it. Okay, so now we know that all authentication, authorization, and accounting is working correctly on the WLC. Next, we're going to go back to our test browser here, lockout, and then we're going to lock back in using our next test user which is support support one cisco looks like we can't lock in so let's do a quick troubleshooting and see why that's the case so first let's take a look at authentication and make sure we're not failing authentication which we're not and then we can check authorization maybe we have a typo somewhere okay so the show profile that's been assigned is correct which is to be lc monitor and let's take a look at the actual attribute that was sent out. And here I don't seem to see attribute. Oh, maybe we forgot to save it. So let's go back and fix that real quick. Again, it's a common mistake. So go back to show profile and then monitor. And you can see right here, we do not see the role there. So let me put that in this monitor and then add and submit. And this time, let me make sure go back and it's there. Okay, while we're here, let's double check on the BULAN and SEC as well, and we also see it there too. So now if we go back to our login with support1 and then Cisco, 
And you can see now we can successfully log in. And although we only assign the role monitor to this particular user, you still can see all the menu tabs. Although these tabs does not monitor, it's just read only to this particular user. So for example, if we go again trying to attempt or attempt to create a SSID, test and test, and then apply. You can see right here we have prompted the authorization has failed because we do not have sufficient privilege to perform the configuration. Okay, so now if we go back to the ACS and look at TACX authorization, and you can see we don't really see any authorization fail on this report because the decision was made locally to the controller. Okay, so the change that we attempted didn't get sent or the ACS was not notified about the change, but instead the controller knows that this user only have a monitor role, so he's not allowed to make any changes on any other tabs. All right, next we're going to test our last user, which is local one. That supposedly he should has access to the VLAN and security. So local one and password. Okay, again, everything looks pretty much the same, but obviously if this person trying to go under the VLAN and then create an SSID, you can see that succeeded because he owns a role of the VLAN, so he has a full read-write access under the VLAN tab. So let's delete that for now. And then we can also hop onto the security tab and make some changes. So let's say we want to create a local user. And you can see we are able to as well because of the role security. But now if we move on to the, let's say, any other tab, like, let's see, wireless. And maybe we're trying to modify QoS profile. So we just pick one, let's say silver. And we'll pick 802.1p and then apply. And you can see immediately we are getting authorization fail message. The same, no privilege, no sufficient privilege uh, warning. Okay, and that's because we're trying to access or make changes to the tab that we do not have a uh, privilege to do so. So you can see that we may not have the same level of granularity as compared to command authorization and the router and the switch. But basically what we can do here is, is to allow whether it's read only or read write access to each one of these uh, menu tab. But at least you'll be able to utilize the same lock-in account that you would be using on your other network devices. So that wraps up our video on ACS 5.4 TACX device admin on the Wise9 controller. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.